Hey everyone, what's up? And welcome back to the Freelance Friday podcast. Today, I wanted to talk about what's going on in the social media management world today in 2024, because there's no doubt that things have changed, you know, from the time that I first started. And for those who are new here, I got my start in the digital world, in the online business world as a social media manager. I worked at a Fortune 500 staffing company in their marketing department, and I was kind of building my side business on the side, moonlighting as a freelancer, not really expecting much to come out of it, just doing it for fun. And over the years, my business built up to the point where I was able to go full time with it. So since then, I have obviously done a lot of different things, but I, I think that social media management is a really, really great place to get started in the world of digital. I think it's a really great place to get started as a freelancer. And contrary to maybe some people's beliefs that social media management is super saturated and that it's too hard now because there's too many platforms. I still think it is a really great place to start your career today. Now, with that said, I've got a list here in my handy dandy notebook of things that I think social media managers truly need to do or to have to set themselves apart in this day and age, because it's not just about knowing how to post on Facebook like it once was, right? There's a lot more to it. So we're going to talk about it. I came up with five things that I wanted to talk about today and that are kind of going to guide my mission and what I plan to teach for this entire year. And if you are interested in learning more about social media management, be sure to check out the link down in the description. I will have a freebie for you. It's a starter kit that will help get you started, you know, in the right direction, in addition to the stuff that we're going to talk about today. So the first thing that you need as a social media manager to really stand out is strategy and know-how. It is not just about tactics. It is not just about optics. And I think sometimes people, often people mistake strategy with optics and tactics. And I want to explain the difference. Tactics are, hey, um, posting a seven second TikTok is good because it'll automatically loop your video because people aren't going to have a chance to read everything on screen. And so you're going to get more views, right? That's a tactic to gain more views strategy is now what are you going to do with those views later? Or do those views even mean anything? Do you need to get the most views on TikTok to accomplish your goal in social media or not? Spoiler alert, the answer is usually no, because usually you're just going to be getting low quality views. Like it's just going to be inflating your view count numbers without actually getting to the heart of it. An example of a tactic or of optics, let's say, is corporate marketing, the head of corporate marketing coming to you and saying, hey, Latasha, I think that we need to start a TikTok account. Even though we're in corporate banking and you know we're talking to 60 year olds most of the time, that's our audience. I think we need to be on TikTok because my little, you know, my teenager, they said that we need to be on TikTok. That's optics. Strategy is really analyzing that audience, saying where do 60 year olds tend to hang out online? What type of information do they like to take in? How do they like to take it in? Do they like to read? Do they like to listen? Do they like to meet in person? And deciding on your marketing platforms, your social media platforms from there. So yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think a lot of people out there do the things that look cool or that sound cool or that sound fun or that sound maybe a little bit easy and they're not necessarily thinking strategically. So if you can learn how to think strategically, how to build a social media strategy and not just post content, you are already putting yourself up above everybody else in terms of the competition. Now, another thing, the second thing I think people need nowadays is a clear area of specialty. Back in the day, you know, 10 years ago or whatever, I think you could say, yeah, I'm a social media manager. I, I dabble. I do a little bit of everything because a little bit of everything was like posting on Facebook, posting on Twitter. Um, I don't even know. I think Instagram was kind of barely out. Nowadays, there are just so many platforms. There's so many types of social media, right? Like you could be on the same platform even. You could say, yeah, I, I post on Twitter or X. Well, do you post corporate event content on Twitter or do you post like snarky, funny, 
comedy meme type content on Twitter. Those are two very different types of social media managers, even within the same platform, and they could even be within the same industry. So I think it is really important that you carve out your area of specialty. And I know niching down this idea of niching down can be kind of stressful. And it is to me too. That's like not how my brain works. I am so multi-passionate. I like a lot of different industries. I like a lot of different platforms. I blah, 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 you know, whatever. I, and I do all those things. I'm going to be honest. I do not just work with one type of industry. It just doesn't work with me, but people do know that I am really good at X, Y, and Z. You know, mostly it's looking at things, high level view and giving you strategic recommendations. I'm good at social media video content, particularly authoritative content. So content that is going to build your overall brand, not just those quick hit tactic type videos. And I'm also good at teaching. I'm good at teaching corporate teams how to leverage social media for their own accounts. And I'm also good I'd like to think good at teaching my audience at how to build social media strategies for themselves and also how to build their own freelance businesses. So those are the things that I specialize in. I don't try to do it all. I don't try to speak to everybody. I don't try to claim that I'm the best at every single platform. What I teach my students is I want to expose them to enough to know about most areas of digital marketing, not everything, of course, but if you are a social media manager and you don't understand what a landing page is, or you don't understand what Google Analytics is, or you don't understand how an email marketing sequence works, I recommend it. I recommend learning a little bit about it. I recommend learning a little bit about graphic design, learning a little bit about video editing. You do not need to be a pro. I'm not suggesting that you try to replace a graphic designer or an analyst or whatever, but it's going to help you going back to the first point. It's going to help you build a better strategy if you understand how all these pieces work together. One of the areas social media managers of today need to learn, whether they like it or not, is video, at least the basics. That's why I'm so happy to share that Munch is sponsoring today's episode. Munch is an advanced AI platform that assists businesses in enhancing the return on investment for long form video content. Munch's AI technology transforms lengthy videos into bite sized social media optimized clips that captivate audiences and keep brands ahead of the game in digital trends. So whether your client is a podcaster, or maybe they're a corporate company that hosts a lot of webinars, or maybe they're a speaker who does public speaking events and has long form videos from that, Munch can help you cut these down and optimize them for social media platforms. It's so easy. All you got to do is create a new project, then select the platforms that you're looking to create videos for. From there, you will paste in the link of the video, or you can upload the video file if it's not out there publicly quite yet. Give it a little bit of time and Munch will automatically find the clips that are most likely to be compelling and interesting to watch on the social media platforms that you've selected. They'll also automatically put captions on there for you, which of course you can edit both the style and the context. And you can also add additional creative elements like music and things like that. So it's amazing. I highly recommend it. And I will leave a link for you down below. Number three, this one is huge. You need social proof. Social proof is, um, you know, it, it's showing, not just telling. It's saying, yes, I do know how to build social media strategies. And here's a testimonial from somebody that I created a social media strategy for. Or here's an example of a video that I created. And we can do something similar for you. It is a review on your Google My Business page or your Facebook page. There are so many different ways to get social proof. But the tried and true way, in my opinion, the one thing that every social media manager needs is a portfolio. A portfolio is a deck or a page on your website that just has a little sampling of content that you've created, campaigns that you've run, brands that you've worked with, testimonials from them if you can. Compile that all together and tell a little story of who you are. It's basically like a resume for a freelancer or for a social media manager. And I think everyone should have one 
but you can also put it on your website, put social proof on your website, have a band of logos on your homepage of brands that you have worked with, have testimonials on your homepage or your services page and so on and so forth. Again, I think that people today, they want results. I mean, they always have wanted results, but I think as budgets are maybe constricting just a little bit, people want to make sure that what they're paying for is actually going to get them results. And how do you do that? You show them that it's gotten other people results. You don't just tell them. Social proof can be challenging though, when you're first starting out, because you know, it's that whole, like, how do you get experience when you don't have experience thing? How I got my first social proof is just by doing it for, for fun, for free, <laughs> doing it for myself, doing it for, you know, whoever would take me really. And so that was a blog for me. So I had a ton of social proof that I could write decently well before I even applied for my first ever blog writing gig, because I had written probably hundreds of blog posts at that point, and they were not all high quality. They were about random things, absolutely, but it doesn't necessarily need to be perfect. It just needs to show, oh, she's a competent writer. She knows how to research, and you can kind of cherry pick your passion projects to find the ones that are the most professional and that are on brand to whatever it is that you're pitching for or applying for. You can also volunteer your time. I think this is a great way to give back and learn at the same time. So if there's a cause that you're passionate about, volunteer a little bit of time or volunteer it to a friend or someone who is, you know, in need of your services. Just make sure that you limit that offer and you're not telling them I'll be your social media manager forever. Make sure that it's like, Hey, I'll create a batch of social images for you, or I will drop one social media strategy or, you know, do a consulting call, that kind of thing in exchange for a review. The fourth thing I think that really is going to set social media managers apart, freelance social media managers in particular, is having streamlined systems. When I first started as a social media manager, I basically ran my business out of Google Drive. And that's okay, like day one, that's okay. Get scrappy, do what you need to do, send things by carrier pigeon if you need to. But once you start taking on a few clients, you really want to have a professional, seamless you know, workflow. You don't want people confused about where they're supposed to go, confused about where they're supposed to pay, not knowing who to contact if they have an issue. Like it should be boom, boom, boom. Start the project, do the project, pay for the project, move on. I've made it no secret that my favorite client management system is HoneyBook. I definitely recommend checking it out. HoneyBook is a tool that enables you to kind of store all of your customer information, onboard your clients, send your contracts, send your invoices, check off milestones involved in projects in one dashboard. So it's just a lot more professional than Google Drive. I'll leave my link for HoneyBook down below. You can get 50% off with my link, which is pretty awesome. It's so well worth the investment, but systems that's not just limited to, you know, HoneyBook or client management systems either it has to do with your social media scheduling software. I use Metricool personally. I'll leave a link for them down below as well. And even just your personal day-to-day -day systems or your, your client interactions. I just onboarded a client, uh, just today, or I'm in the process of onboarding them in that first email, when we got that, yes, let's move forward. I replied with great. I'm excited to work on this project. Let's get these meetings on the calendar. Now let's batch out these four meetings that we're going to have and put them on the calendar now. So no one is sending through last minute meeting requests. No one is confused about where they're supposed to be. I'm not stressed out because I'm having to cancel things and move things around. Like it is a system and it looks more professional and it also saves you a lot of headache and makes your business more sustainable. It makes it so that you are able to, you know, keep up with its demands a lot easier. And the last thing that I think we all need, especially when times are tough, when times are slow, when things are challenging, is a success mindset. Now, I'm not all about that toxic positivity. That's just not really my vibe. It's okay to be like, something sucks, something is hard, something is stressful. But I do think that really anything in business requires resilience and requires consistency. I'm not like the best person in the world at social media marketing. I think my business has been able to succeed because I have consistently stuck at it because I've maintained consistent messaging. And so people think of me like just this client that I just onboarded. I worked with them years ago 
And they were like, oh, Latasha does this thing. And I know she does this thing because she consistently posts on LinkedIn and shares that she is still in business. And so she came top of mind. It doesn't mean I'm the best you know, person to take this job in the world, obviously. I think just maintaining that kind of resilience and that consistency goes a long way and not letting the hard times sort of beat you down. Success mindset to me is about going the extra mile for your clients and genuinely wanting them to have success, not just thinking about your own personal success. And I know this might be an unpopular thing to say because I think, you know, sometimes people think, oh, that's so hustle culture. That's so girl boss of you to say, you know, they should be lucky to work with me. And absolutely, we should all be lucky to work with each other. This should be a reciprocal thing. But at the end of the day, I don't say yes to projects that I'm not like 90% confident that I can do really, really well. And of course, that just comes with practice, right? I'm not saying that you should um, overthink it and have imposter syndrome either, but you should be quoting appropriate prices. If you are brand new and you've never done something before, you probably shouldn't be charging $10,000 for a project that you've never done before, right? So making sure as best to the best of your ability that you're quoting in a way that is going to get your clients results, that you are going the extra mile. I sometimes hear from social media managers who are like, oh my gosh, this client, they wanted a, you know, me to pull a report of a campaign that we ran for their holiday promotion. And normally I only do one report a month for them. And I'm like, won't it make you look good if the numbers are good? And shouldn't they be good? They're probably good, right? Won't it make you look better? Won't it be a way to ensure that you're gonna get that as a repeat client? And don't you want your client to know what's working for them so that they can continue to allocate funds appropriately next month or, you know, change their strategy if something didn't work. Like you should genuinely care about your clients. Again, this doesn't have to be toxic. You don't need to treat them like family or anything, but if something's going wrong, I don't mind pulling an extra report for my client. I don't mind hopping on an extra call to help out a client. And um, yeah, I think those who go the extra mile will succeed in 2024. And those who don't will struggle a little bit. I think that's just how it is. I think that's just the season that we are in. But let me know what you think about these five tips, anything you agree with or disagree with. And if you want to dive deeper into any of these five things, I invite you to check out my resources. Again, I'll leave a freebie for you down below. It's a free social media management starter kit that dives a little bit deeper into all of these things, but I'll also leave a link for my accelerator program. If you want to check that out, if you're really ready to roll up your sleeves and yeah, I thank you so much for tuning in today. Really hope this was helpful. Wishing you luck in your career and in your business this year. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.